a wonderful blue sky day is regarded by many landscape photographers as, well, not the best lighting, but at least it's better than 100% cloud cover, isn't it? Paradoxically, a cloudy day is ideal for close-ups of flowers, as harsh shadows are no longer an issue, but at stand on the other day I had to accept whatever nature delivered, as I had booked the visit days in advance. National Trust properties are gradually reawakening from lockdown, but visitors must book in advance. At least I was fortunate in having a blue sky setting the challenge. Provided you position the shadows correctly, the big view of the house and garden shouldn't pose too much of a problem, particularly as the garden currently is a riot of colour. In comparison with other National Trust properties, Standon is not that old. The house was built in 1892 through to 94 on a south-facing hilltop having uninterrupted views towards Ashdown Forest, but the reservoir came later in 1952. The architect Philip Webb created a house built to last that gradually emerges from existing old buildings without dominating them. The garden, the focus of my trip as the house was not open, was created soon after the land was purchased in 1891. General views of gardens should not pose too many exposure problems on sunny days, provided the shadows don't dominate. Getting in closer requires more care. This is where spot metering as opposed to matrix or ESP is much more successful in achieving best results. No camera can achieve a correct overall exposure in a single shot of a subject having a high dynamic range. It is likely that part of the shot will be underexposed, overexposed, or at worst, both. However, with digital photography, we take an image with post-production in mind, correcting those parts of the image that are over or underexposed. I spot meter highlights so that shadows are underexposed. They are easier to correct in Lightroom or Photoshop, provided, of course, noise does not rear its ugly head. I don't expose to the right. That will create burnt-out highlights impossible to correct in post-production. To maintain good depth of field over the entire shrub that is from front to back, but not the background, I set the aperture to f11. Now that might be smaller than expected, but you see depth of field is reduced because I was using the telephoto end of my lens. Also, I positioned the shrub in front of a dark background so that it would stand out. I also made great use of shadows in wider views of the garden, but positioned carefully here, providing a frame around the highlights. But I expose for the highlights and then restore some life back to shadows in post-production. A feature of Standon, the interiors in particular, are the Morris wallpapers. I photographed them on a previous visit when the house was open, and I conclude therefore this presentation with them as a taster for a future visit one day when matters are back to normal. <laughs>